first title of the next lecture, of the first lecture of the next session is by, by Dr. Araf from Israel. Dr. Araf received his bachelor's degree in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, his veterinary degree at the University of Bologna in Italy, and he specializes in the area of crab biology and thermodynamics via a joint program between California, Berkeley, and Bologna. He completed his postdoctoral studies at UC Davis and then worked at the center as a senior scientist in the field of crab biology reproduction. He established IMT Limited Israel, which has developed many issued patents, having published over 100 papers and book chapters and received many awards. He will give us today a talk on innovations of crab preservation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to first to thank the organization committee for this invitation. Uh, I decided that bef before I will go into innovation, I'll give one slide about uh, the history, and uh, because it's also related to where we are now in Paris. And uh, I don't know uh, how many of you know that vitrification is actually started before freezing, before slow freezing, actually, uh, many years ago. And it was here in uh, Paris uh, by this uh, person here. And his name is Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac, and he was a chemist. And this is the first fly with a hot air balloon uh, in 1804, here above Paris. And what he, dis what he uh, found, actually, is that the clouds are uh, having a liquid water, even that the temperature of uh, at four, at 4,000 uh, 4, meters is uh, way below zero degrees centigrade, the freezing point of water. So he actually defined the first time that water can supercool uh, to low temperature without crystallization, and this is actually the basics of uh, vitrification. And so vitrification is almost more than 200 years uh, old. So uh, <clears throat> Uh, what I'm going to go through are uh, different uh, uh, devices that we call them all by uh, uh, names. Uh, so the first one will be automatic device for vitrification, full automatic device, everything, the preparation and the going into liquid nitrogen, everything is automatic. And I'm going to show you how it's work. Um, we do it for all sites, embryos, ovarian tissue, and testicular tissue as well. Uh, we uh, developed a device, a very small benchtop device that uh, produced liquid air and uh, uh, sterile liquid air or clean liquid air that can be used for open system and especially for all sites. And I believe that all open system, it's the, it's the method of choice for uh, vitrification of all sites. So I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, to store the cells, we produce a, a closed canister, completely closed and sealed uh, with a, a vapor inside at a temperature of minus 196 that goes into the regular container, the regular deer that everybody has. And finally, I'll talk about uh, freeze drying, uh, a very future uh, aspect of uh, how, to, how I think that uh, car, car preservation should look like, and uh, we produce a device that will uh, freeze dry the sperm and also tissue. So uh, let me go to the first. Uh, this is my daughter, and uh, she did uh, with me uh, one of the first uh, all-site vitrification. The whole process was done by her. She's six years old, and uh, and this is the device. It's called Sarah and uh, it's doing the whole process. And the key element is uh, this uh, uh, special uh, capsule that sits in, sorry, go back. So uh, it's uh, have a capsule of uh, one millimeter diameter uh, with a pores, square pores that are of uh, 50 microns. Uh, here you can see uh, bovine oocytes uh, sitting inside the capsules, and this is in the end of the straw. Here you can see the straw. It's a regular quarter cc straws of uh, 
produced here in France from Carbar system. And, uh, and we have in the device about uh, a place for six throws, so it's running six throws together. In each throws, we can put five all sites, so we can uh, operate 30 all sites together in the same time, and it will take something between 15 to 17 minutes, the whole, the whole uh, process. And it's full automatic, and it will go, as I'm going to show you, into liquid nitrogen. So we can use also different type of straws. Uh, these are uh, maxi straws or large straws that go, that we'll use for uh, tissue. So how is it working? I have uh, uh, animation that I hope it's work. What is this? No. So basically, uh, we are going from uh, uh, one container, one uh, cup uh, to the other that have different solution. Uh, and everything is done by capillarity, so there is no any uh, pumping or no any suction and no any damage to the cells. They all go by uh, capillarity uh, from uh, uh, the different solutions. So we take off solution and we load solution of uh, cryoprotectant. This is the equilibration solution. So 50%. We have nine space, so we can do a very gradual uh, <clears throat> increasing of the car protecting solution, and then in the end, it will remove the equilibration solution and will go into vitrification solution. About one minute in the final uh, step, then it will take it off, will produce the minimum drop volume that is needed uh, for the vitrification, and then will go into liquid nitrogen and will stay there. And we can also use, as I'm going to show you, liquid nitrogen slush. That will tell you what is it. So results. Uh, we started with uh, uh, mice, and we had a very high uh, survival of uh, between 95 to 100% survival of uh, oocytes and uh, early stage embryos. Those, they will reach 80% of blastocyst after vitrification. This was very similar to a fresh control. We didn't even have to do a control of uh, vitrification with cryotop uh, because they, the results were actually the same like uh, uh, fresh. And we published this, uh, we just presented it in the last ESHRE. Um, this is a bovine uh, all sites. Uh, which are more sensitive. Uh, we did uh, uh, zygotes after, uh, after fertilization, and we had 50% cleavage rate and 10% blastocyst rate uh, of these uh, uh, oocytes, uh, fertilized oocytes, and that we are going to publish now. Uh, we did uh, recently um, work with a, a lamp oocytes in Sardinia, I did it. And because it was out of the season, the results are, uh, of blastocyst formation are not very high also in the, the control group. But we had uh, a nice uh, cleavage rate after uh, vitrification of the oocytes, M2 oocytes. And this is what the first blastocyst we uh, produced from, uh, from a vitrified oocyte, all in uh, automatic, full automatic uh, vitrification uh, uh, procedure. Uh, now, to uh, move into tissue, we had to, we thought that we would need to uh, increase more the uh, cooling rate, and we do it uh, by producing a liquid nitrogen sludge, which is super cooled liquid nitrogen, a temperature close to minus 210. And we do it by applying a, a negative pressure above the liquid nitrogen. So we uh, uh, combine it into the device. Uh, so here we can do the, this was the Vitmaster, and here we have the uh, automatic device uh, for uh, uh, vitrification. Uh, we decided to go to this uh, uh, size of uh, tissue, uh, one millimeter, three millimeter to five millimeter that fit inside the straws, and they can produce with the slush, with the uh, uh, 
supercooled liquid nitrogen uh, above 10,000 degrees per minute, which I think that it's uh, uh, good for vitrification of tissue. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, was done in Yale with uh, Pasquale Patrizio. Uh, we did the vitrification of uh, human uh, slices after that they've been already vitrified before and donated for research. So uh, uh, we did histology and uh, histochemistry also, and we found no difference between uh, the first vitrification and the second vitrification uh, that was done with this uh, automatic vitrification. Also in uh, Italy, in Sardinia, I did uh, this work. Uh, we uh, tried to aspirate uh, testicular tissue uh, with a needle. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a seminal tubulus from, uh, from uh, RAM, from RAM uh, uh, testis, uh, isolated and vitrified uh, in the automatic device. Uh, here we did the uh, OST um, staining showing uh, spermatogonia, a live spermatogonia, and this is ongoing study that we are now transferred back to animals to see how they uh, grow after vitrification. We did also uh, some uh, non-reproductive uh, uh, tissue. Uh, this is uh, a cord, a spinal cord tissue and uh, a DRG, dorsal root ganglia, isolated from fetus of uh, rat fetus, and we published this. Um, this tissue was uh, cultured uh, after vitrification, and we found uh, the immigration of uh, neuronal cells and also glia cells, as they showed this, uh, with this immunofluorescent double staining. Uh, so the green is for uh, uh, neurons, and the red is for glia cells, all produced from uh, uh, the spinal cord after vitrification. And we published this in stem cells. And very, very recently, we did also adult uh, nerve cells, which are very sensitive to cryopreservation. And uh, this is from uh, olfactory nerve of uh, <coughs> a rat. Uh, and uh, uh, we can see uh, uh, by immunohistochemistry that they produce uh, neuronal cells after uh, culture. OK. Uh, about more than 25 years ago, I developed this method of vitrification, use, uh, which I call the minimum drop size. And I'm showing you here because we uh, decided that if we are holding the, the cells in a very small volume of less than 0.1 microliter, uh, we can, and this is why we call it the minimum drop size, because it's the minimum volume that you can keep cells in a drop without uh, 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 making a damage. And we showed at that time that if we are using this uh, volume, we can reduce the carbon to concentration of the vitrification solution concentration to 50% of what you actually need when you do a regular vitrification with a large volume. So this is, for example, here. Uh, the probability of vitrification was very high with a very, a very low concentration of carboprotectin. So uh, I decided now that uh, after th all these years to repeat it and uh, uh, with human embryos, and we did, the, we, we used 3PN embryos um, that normally as a fresh, they will grow to the blastocyst in a rate of about uh, 21%. Uh, so we, de we took these embryos uh, and uh, we vitrified them in the cryotop in a regular uh, way uh, <clears throat> with 100% vitrification solution. Uh, they uh, uh, produce uh, uh, about 90% 90, 90 90 of them uh, were uh, survived and 80% uh, cleaved and blastocyst was about 20%. Now we did the same work with the minimum drop size, with a very small volume, but with half of this concentration. So actually it's the same concentration of equilibration solution. And we had exactly the same results. 90% uh, overall survival and uh, a cleavage of, uh, seven, uh, of 74 
very similar to a 100% uh, vitrification solution, and also blast assist rate in the same like a, a, a high concentration of car protectant. So basically, uh, it was repeated what we found uh, uh, 25 years ago, but with human embryos. <clears throat> However, all this uh, study was done in open system vitrification, which means that you are in the, uh, direct contact to liquid nitrogen, and we know that uh, not only all sites survive in liquid nitrogen, but also everything which will touch the liquid nitrogen will survive, virus, bacteria, yeast, they will all uh, can survive liquid nitrogen and, and stay there. And this is why we produce a, a, this a small uh, um, device, portable device, which have a filter here, and it will filter the air and produce a liquid air that will come out here. Um, <clears throat> we can produce something like 200 milliliter of liquid air in 10 minutes, uh, so it's a, a, a nice efficiency. And this liquid air is absolutely sterile. It's, there is no, we did a bio burden test on this liquid, nat, liquid air. There is no any bacteria or yeast. And the only difference is that it contains some oxygen. So about 20% oxygen inside. The temperature is the same. The temperature is minus 196, the same like liquid air, liquid nitrogen. And uh, therefore we uh, try to vitrify human oocytes uh, in liquid air and we did uh, three consecutive times of uh, vitrifying and warming, vitrification and warming, the same embryos, the same oocytes, and we had no, no any uh, reduction in survival, 100% survival of these oocytes. And this was all published uh, very recently in RBM Online. <clears throat> now, to uh, preserve the cells, uh, you need also, if you are open system, you need to preserve them in, in, uh, in uh, uh, isolated uh, way. So we uh, developed this canister, which looks very uh, much like a regular canister, but it's uh, completely sealed in the bottom, and also here with a special um, ring which shrinks at low temperature, so it's completely sealed the canister. And uh, the temperature inside the canister, although the canister is empty, uh, there is no any liquid nitrogen inside the canister, the temperature uh, is one, minus 196 because it's equilibrate with the temperature of the dewer of the liquid nitrogen that is surrounding the canister. And we did bio burden test of, uh, of the liquid air or the vapor that uh, stay inside the canister and we found that it's uh, completely sterile. <clears throat> So uh, uh, you can use uh, this type of canister for other reasons, uh, for if you have infected uh, uh, semen and you want to preserve it like uh, if you need, uh, uh, normally you need three different containers for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. And here you can use uh, in the same dual uh, three different canisters, so it will save some money. We also uh, preserve uh, the cells uh, for one week uh, in, uh, in this device, and we found uh, the same 98 uh, percentage of survival of, the, of mice uh, after preservation in this canister. When I produced this canister, I, I, I already had an idea of what to do with it uh, in something else, because I'm working, the last 15 years, I'm working on freeze drying. And I said, okay, if we have a closed canister and we applied vacuum inside the canister, we actually can uh, freeze dry inside the canister in, in a very efficient way. So uh, uh, this is uh, the canister. Uh, that you can connect here to a, a vacuum pump. And uh, we have a heater here. And this is where the samples are. So we uh, produce probably the smallest freeze drying device. Here it is uh, in your uh, regular uh, 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 dewer. 
And one of the uh, big advantage of this device is that you can sterilize it. Because normally, if you're using um, a regular uh, freeze drying and uh, you want to sterilize it, you can't. The only freeze drying device that you can sterilize is this one, which uh, uses steam sterilization. Uh, and this is a very expensive and very uh, complicated device. So our device can go into an autoclave and be uh, sterilized very easily. And uh, recently, we also produce a disposable uh, device, which you don't have to sterilize because uh, you are taking the whole device uh, uh, with the samples to uh, storage. So this is a, a human sperm. Uh, how they look like? These are uh, um, drops of about uh, 10 microliter each. And these are completely dried. And this is how they look like in the dry state. We did the uh, um, test of uh, DNA integrity by uh, using halosperm. And we found uh, that there is no difference between fresh and uh, uh, freeze-dried uh, sperm. However, uh, this is very much depend on the temperature of storage. And uh, we uh, tried different temperature of storage of minus 20, 4 degrees centigrade for refrigeration, or 30 degrees centigrade. And uh, only at minus 20 and 4 degrees refrigeration, the results of DNA integrity was compared to fresh, also the number of cells that were recovered. At for, um, uh, I know why, but at uh, 30 degrees centigrade, the results was, were not good. We moved also to uh, uh, tissue freeze drying. And uh, we are, uh, uh, this is still ongoing. We are doing ovarian tissue uh, freeze drying using the same concept. And we were very surprised to see that the histology looks very, very promising uh, of the uh, cells after uh, um, freeze drying, rehydration, and culture. <clears throat> and uh, this is the future, I think. I believe that in the future, we are not going to have this type of uh, preservation, which is very demanding, very expensive. Um, <clears throat> this is a cryo banking in the United States, how it's looked like. And this is how it should be. Everything should be at refrigeration or at uh, a room temperature. So I would like to thank uh, uh, everybody that's working with me. Uh, by chance, everybody is, uh, are Italian, even if they are uh, uh, outside of Italy. This is uh, Pasquale Patrizio in Yale, uh, Lino Loy from Teramo University, Paolo Levisetti in the Humanitas Milano. Uh, I just spent uh, vacation, uh, sorry, sabbatical <laughs> in uh, Sardinia. Uh, and this is uh, Sergio Leda from Sardinia. And this is my group, uh, Fertile Safe in Israel. Thank you very much.